Justin's like brilliant. I know. What I want to ask him is, how does he learn? Uh -huh. like, like, yeah, how? He's had three different systems yeah. over the last three. This is his third system in three years. I, I know. Think. Yeah, he's got that thing inside of him that's that's telling whoever, like, I got this down cold yes. if you haven't noticed no. the chargers are entering the final week of otas and justin herbert is impressing everybody in practice not just with how smart he is but with how well he is throwing the ball but not only that we have some offensive line news an undrafted free agent is playing pretty well and lad mcconkey is continuing to establish a good connection with justin herbert let me give you the full breakdown on OTAs. So as you probably know, Justin Herbert, he's been in the news a little bit recently with that whole controversy about him not having the clutch factor and Chris Harris saying that on the Kay Adams show, not being an elite quarterback, you know, so it's great timing that he is balling out in OTAs right now since he can't really like prove himself in game action like he has his whole career, honestly. But Jim Harbaugh was putting the team in game-like situations because the main focus of the day was situational football and they focused on third downs like red zone two minute drills uh being backed up at their own goal line basically like every possible clutch moment was simulated today at practice and justin herbert had a lot of success coincidentally uh in the red zone drills he threw three touchdowns all to guys that you wouldn't really expect to get a bunch of targets in this offense so he's also raising the level of play of the guys around him on offense it seems like zach hines the undrafted free agent tight end he caught a touchdown which was apparently the best throw of the day right up the seam justin was able to fit it in the back of the end zone past multiple defenders and zach hines did a good job of getting his feet down and controlling the catch it's really nice to see zach hines get some action with justin herbert in the first team offense because He's an undrafted free agent from South Dakota State. He's six foot six, 264 pounds. He is a pretty good pass catching tight end. Only dropped four passes on 134 targets in his career in college, but he needs to develop some better route running skills. Guys like Dallas Goddard and Tucker Craft. They came out of South Dakota State as well. So that school, I know it's like kind of a small school, but it's been a little bit of a factory, you know, for some pretty solid NFL tight ends recently. And Zach Hines, he's got the size, he's got the hands, and he's got the ability to block in order to succeed in the NFL. So just keep an eye out for him in training camp because he might be able to turn some heads. The next two touchdowns in the red zone period were to Isaiah Spiller and Stone Smart. Now, it's good to see Isaiah Spiller having some success in this offense, and he's going to need to build some momentum if he wants to carve out a role for himself in this running back room, but he definitely has the talent to do so. And just from the pictures that we have, it looks like he got a lot of action in the passing game as well throughout the entire day uh, through team drills, basically. And then Stone Smart, he caught that other touchdown in the red zone. And I think it's worth noting that every single score here in the red zone was by a tight end or a running back. And we knew that the Chargers would be using tight ends a lot in the pass game as well as the run game. And now we're seeing it come to fruition already really early on, albeit, but two tight ends catching touchdowns and no wide receivers catching touchdowns in the red zone drills. We're going to see if that trend continues in training camp, but now it is a good time to talk about these wide receivers. And Daniel Popper of The Athletic, he wrote a great article detailing so many things that happened, so make sure to go check that out. At least click on the link. I'm going to put it in the description. Pretty sure it helps him out a lot if you click on the link. According to Daniel Popper, in the third down session, Justin Herbert threw three great balls to Josh Palmer, Lad McConkey, and DJ Chark for what should have been three conversions, but DJ Chark, he dropped his pass. And so the offense was only two out of three on third downs in the team drills. I'm glad that both Josh Palmer and Lad McConkey are playing well, but DJ Chark dropping the ball, it's a little bit concerning. He had five drops last year and a 12.5 drop percentage. He also had some fumbling issues, but we don't need any more receivers dropping balls from Justin Herbert. We had plenty of that last year. If you don't believe me, just watch my video from yesterday because it was a little bit tough to watch, especially towards the end because of how many people were dropping balls. But Lad McConkey, man, he is continuing to play well with Justin Herbert in this first team offense. And he's primarily been that slot wide receiver throughout a lot of the OTA team drills so far. Daniel Popper, he also noted that he beat Jasir Taylor twice from the slot in team drills with one being on a slant and then another being on an out route. Lad McConkey, man, he has been cooking from the slot 
all of OTAs, and I'm really excited for what Ladd could potentially be just in this rookie season. His route running looks good. He's looking fast out there. He's been producing a lot in the team drills, and there's not a lot of wide receivers that are going to be taking away a, a bunch of targets from him. So he could legitimately be like that go-to guy for Justin Herbert to look for on third downs right away. That's what seems to be happening right now in practice. So once the season comes, once training camp comes and all that stuff, we'll see if that remains consistent. But one consistent thing in practice is the mixing and matching of the starting offensive line. But today, they stuck with the same starting five in Rashawn Slater, Zion Johnson, Bradley Bozeman, and then Trey Pipkins at the right guard spot with Joe All at right tackle. So that is probably the favorite to what is going to be the starting unit on day one against the Raiders. Seems like the team is pretty confident in Trey Pipkins' ability to transition to that right guard spot from the right tackle spot last year. But the second team offensive line is where it gets a little interesting because Jamari Sawyer, he was playing both that right guard and right tackle spot at times, but then also Alex Leatherwood, the new offensive lineman that we just signed, was the second team right tackle immediately. And that I think that just shows maybe how highly that they view him or it also could just show how highly they view the other backup tackles on this roster. I don't know. And maybe they saw what they were getting with these other backup tackles like Foster Serrell. And they thought, oh my God, we should go out and sign this guy, Alex Leatherwood. I don't know. Jordan McFadden was also the second team left guard and got some action in the first team offense, not as an offensive lineman, but as a jumbo set tight end and fullback, just like we saw him do in the regular season last year. I love that this coaching staff is still utilizing him in that way, and he's bound to get some game action at that spot, but I haven't seen or heard much of him playing the center position because that was something that I really, really wanted to see, like have him develop behind Bradley Bozeman for this season. I think if he starts developing that skill set of playing center and, you know, snapping the ball right now, he could really develop into a solid starter like next season after probably Bradley Bozeman is not going to be on this team. They already like him enough to throw him out there as the extra offensive lineman with the starters. So I don't know, maybe he is working there at center, but we're just kind of like not really seeing it right now and it's not really being reported. But that's what I want. I want to see him at center. And now let's talk about the guys not participating. According to Daniel Popper, the best reporter at The Athletic, Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, Will Disley, Hayden Hurst, and Bud Dupree were all out Chris Rumpf and Donald Parham, they were with the trainers. And then Junior Colson, he was back out there, but only in the individual drills. Now, okay, Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, they're both still out, which, you know, as a Chargers fan, I'm starting to get a little bit of uh, PTSD right now because they both have injury histories, especially J.K. Dobbins. And I really hope that they're just having some rest days or, or something. I'm at least happy that Isaiah Spiller is producing and practice in the absence of those guys, but I don't know, man. I might start looking at like some free agent running backs just to cool my nerves because like I said, both of these guys have injury histories and we're really kind of relying on them to stay healthy. So we might need to sign another uh, free agent running back, but the tight ends, Will Disley, he was out again. And then Hayden Hurst this time was out. I'm, I'm more hopeful with those guys because they're probably just resting Hayden Hurst because he had a great day in practice last week. But, you know, Zach Hines and Stone Smart, they're looking really good, specifically in the red zone like we just talked about. So this tight end room, it's looking like it could be deeper than we initially thought. And also, if you look closely at this picture, you can see the three safeties on the field. And from right to left, it's Derwin James, Alohi Gilman right back there. And then way back there on the left is JT Woods. So in the three safety looks that Jesse Minter has out there right now for the first team defense, it seems as though Derwin James is probably playing closer to the line of scrimmage, like in the box. Alohi Gilman and JT Woods, they're the deeper safeties. JT Woods, he's got a lot of range, so he's probably like the single high safety at times. And then also, if you look at the offense in the huddle, they have DJ Chark and Josh Palmer as the wide receivers in their two tight end sets because Stone Smart and Zach Hines are also out there in the huddle. And now look at this picture with Joe Wall against Joey Bosa. And listen, bro, I know the pads are not on yet, but this is just, it, it looks like great technique by Joe Wall, man. The hand placement, the hips, I just, I love it. And I really, I'm so excited. I can't wait until we get to see some actual real reps from these guys because I think Joe Walt is gonna earn the respect of Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack 
very quickly. So my main takeaways from practice are that Zach Hines is impressing. Isaiah Spiller, he's taking advantage of those opportunities. I'm starting to get a little bit freaked out about this running back position. I need to cool down a little bit because we're still very early. But also, Justin Herbert is a clutch quarterback. And if you want even more evidence of that fact, then you can just click right here.